guys, we finally done it. Proud to announce to you guys and to let you guys know that my solar system has finally paid off itself. So this actually happened in November 2023 and I've just been so busy with personal life and everything else. I've wanted to document stuff more about cars than this, but we've now got the time to do that and uh, proud to let you guys know and to share that my solar panel has paid itself off. So we've broken even and everything now is essentially um, not factoring in any of the original upfront costs. So it's really, really, really good. So how long did it take? The summary is it's taken us literally four years. So um, basically the video today, I wanna go through everything. So I wanna be transparent with you guys. I want to ensure that you guys can see the, um, the exact solar system I've got. You can see the costs involved. You can see the electricity um, costs and the different electricity plans I've been on throughout the various years. Um, I want to talk to you guys about all the savings and the breakdown of those savings. We'll touch a little bit on environmental impacts. We'll touch a bit on what's next in the future of it. And then we'll kind of wrap up the video. So without further ado, uh, we'll jump straight into it. Based on uh, how this video is, I'll always use chapters. So, you know, click and fast forward to wherever you guys need. So what you guys can see on the screen at the moment is um, the company that I've gone with is Beyond Solar. So they're a company out in Ingleburn. They've been fantastic. Uh, this video is absolutely not sponsored by them. I'm not getting anything in terms of creating this video. I just want to share with you guys the, um, the journey that I've taken with solar so far. So you can see their invoice date was 8th of October 2019 and we essentially broke even in, um, we, sorry, we had the install in November 2019 and then we broke even in November 2024. So let's scroll down and I'll take you guys through the invoice so you guys know exactly what system I've got. So I'll stop the scrolling there. So our solar PV system, 9.24 kilowatts worth of panels which consists of 28 Jinko uh, 330 watt black panels. So I'll put a video overlay so you guys can see what the panels essentially look like. But back then, 330 watt was uh, pretty much towards the top. The th uh, there was 330 that was fairly common at, at top of the premium side of things. Then there was 350 and then 375 was pretty rare at that point in time. Um, and this is a string setup, essentially, uh, based on that cost. I do recall quite clearly that I could get a micro inverter setup like your end phase, but back then the cost itself was about fifteen or sixteen thousand dollars. So it was a couple of thousand dollars more. And I guess in my instance, I just didn't want to. I didn't feel like I wanted to spend that additional amount. I personally didn't see um, the specific benefits, and that was my decision. Do I regret it? Absolutely not. So because the system paid off now, right? So anyways, uh, back onto the panel. So 28 Jinko panels there, 330 watts per panel, 12 years warranty, 25 years performance warranty. So um, that's panels. Jumping through to the inverter. So it's a three phase inverter. It's a Simo, Fronia Simo, 8.2 kilowatts. 10 years warranty total, Wi-Fi monitoring included, battery compatible as well to future proof if that's the direction that we're going to go. Now, just remember that if you guys are buying a solar system or you're looking at solar system, make sure you always do oversize because the logic there is essentially there's um, trans there's loss of power as it gets transferred from the roof down to wherever your inverter is stored. And you always want to make sure that you're generating as much as you can in terms of power so that your um, inverter is running at almost max, if not max capacity. Um, and then next thing I've got optimizers, which essentially is sort of like our micro inverter. Now, the reason why we've got optimizers on our property is because we've got um, we've got the TV antenna up top and we just wanted to mitigate any risks of potentially impacting the rest of the system. So string setups, if you weren't aware, um, they, as, they, as the name sounds, it runs in a string. So what that actually means is if one panel is down, pretty much all of it is down. So we didn't want to impact all of that. So we've got the recommendation back then was get some optimizers and that's what we've done. We've also got solar analytics, uh, three phase monitoring with a lifetime subscription. Um, they should have actually put a asterisk there because I've got a separate issue with solar analytics and basically um, I can cover that off in a short other video, but the summary of it is I'm going to lose connection to solar analytics sometime this year. Uh, five years warranty supposedly on that and then of course all the installation, the STC government incentive and then renewable energy incentive as a part of the STC that you can see there of 153 and then $36 each, $5,508. So $9,000 was essentially what we paid. And then the rest of it is essentially uh, just the processing fees and whatnot 
um, processing detail, sorry, and whatnot. So scrolling up, total system, $9,000, and then scrolling further up, that's the summary of the system. So 9.24 kilowatt system, 28 panels, paired to a uh, eight kilowatt inverter. So that is essentially what I've paid. So let's now jump through to the next section. So what you can see here is essentially the dashboard for Solar Analytics. So Solar Analytics is essentially a third party software that kind of plugs into your household energy and it allows you to monitor consumption along with energy production and it kind of pairs all of that up. You enter your plan in, your electricity plan into Solar Analytics, it spits out all the savings and everything for you. So every time I've changed my plans, I've updated that there. So this is extremely, extremely accurate. Okay, so on this page here, you can essentially see all of the solar savings total. Uh, and down the bottom left here, so, uh, total solar savings, 9,365. So we hit the 9,000 mark back in uh, November. And so that essentially the breakdown is uh, 3,486 roughly saved through solar consumed on site. So that's self consumption, I guess, during the day when solar is being produced. You've got 5,611. Uh, which is spent on energy imported from the grid and then earned through solar exported to your grid, which is essentially from your feed-in tariff, $5,877.76. So we'll go through the plans of what I've paid um, in a little bit, but essentially that is all of it. And you can see based on the months, how it generates and what usage and whatnot, all the savings kind of goes down as you head through to the winter months, back up through to the summer months and so forth. So that's basically based on all of the savings. Based on the usage, the total amount you can see here, if I go total here, energy imported from the grid. So over the past four and a bit years is just under 21 megawatt hours. Consumed is 12.298 and then exported through the grid 36.198. And so if we split it by year, you can see here if I switch back to 20, 19 so this was when we uh, had it installed and again this was just remember this was from uh, November 2019 right so I guess it's a bit redundant to compare it based on the full year but 2020 you can see down the bottom here we imported about 4.362 megawatts exported 8.399 and consumed 2.4 jumping up to the next year again it's quite consistent around four megawatts imported and eight and a half exported, jumping to 22. Again, you can see there, very similar, just around four megawatts imported, eight exported. And then jumping through to 2023, you'll see it jumps up to 5.8 imported and 7.9 exported. So the energy imported, essentially, um, the, the reason why this has spiked compared to the previous year, is because that's when we picked up the Tesla Model Y. And so, based on the various plans, you know, there were times where we paid for charging and whatnot, but the long story short of it is, electricity consumption definitely increased a lot when we bought the EV. So uh, yeah, if there's anything more about the savings that you guys want to know, or anything in particular around solar analytics, uh, drop it in the comments below. I'll definitely answer those as we go, and I can do a separate video for whatever we need. But that's essentially the savings over the years. And now what I want to show you guys is the solar plans that I've been on. So, okay, so I know you guys love a good spreadsheet. Who doesn't? Um, here it is. Here's everything that we've gone through over the past couple of years. So being very transparent with you guys, I looked up some of the previous bills so you guys can specifically see my whole journey and all the plans that I've been on. So I'm very fortunate to be in an area where we've just got a single rate tariff. So there is no, I guess, additional fees or tariffs or anything specific that I need to work through. Um, so what that means for me is before solar, let's look at column B. Before solar, I was paying roughly 21 cents per kilowatt hour to use. Every day the supply was 91 cents. And then my quarterly bills in the winter months or heading out of winter afterwards as well, uh, $432 roughly. And then during the summer months, oh, apologies, the typo there. And then for the summer months, pretty much uh, $739. And obviously that's because we've got ducted air conditioning as well. And we like to run that through. And then in the winter months also using the ducted heating as well. And so as you can see there, it was fairly expensive. And so as soon as we moved on to install solar in November, the first thing I did was 
jump straight onto Origin Energy because I recall they had the best feeding tariff at that point in time. 21 cents feeding tariff. That was absolutely amazing. And so cost went up, daily supply went down in terms of the usage, but feeding tariff was absolutely amazing. And so what that meant was I was in credit. Even when in 2020, when um, the, the feeding tariffs dropped, so Origin also dropped to, uh, I think it was 17 cents or maybe it was even less than that. But either way, in 2020, I switched over to AGL because they were offering 17 cents. And then um, what actually happened was I recall quite clearly that when they announced that they were going to drop, I tried to see if they could continue matching the 21 cents or something higher as opposed to me joining AGL. They said no, so I went ahead and I joined AGL. Funny enough, a year later, I'm guessing that they probably had a lot of people leave. Um, they essentially called back and so they had a retention team supposedly. And mind you, I actually asked before I left if I could speak to someone in the retention team and they said it didn't exist. So anyways, in 2021, they had a retention team. They called me and they said, if you come back with us today, we can offer you 21 cents feeding tariff. And here are the rates. And as you can see, it's fairly similar to what I was before. Mind you, even though it was a three cents uh, more for the daily supply, I knew that I would make that up very, very easily because the feeding tariff was going to be higher. So what did I do? Absolutely joined back. So Origin had my, had my money and again, I was in credit. Now, how much are we talking about in credit? So from memory, uh, in credit was between 30 to $50 a quarter that I was in credit pretty much throughout three years. Following that, um, all of these feeding tariffs dropped uh, in 2022. It dropped down, and I remember very, very clearly, they all dropped down to 12 cents, and that seemed to be the industry norm, 12 cents per kilowatt hour as the feeding tariff. And so I went to this newly founded company, um, at least I thought it was new at that point in time, called PowerShop, and PowerShop essentially had 13 cent feeding tariff. Even though the daily supply was still more, uh, the cost per kilowatt usage was less, and they also had a decent feeding tariff. So I naturally went with them and the cost back then worked out to roughly be $130 per quarter through the year. Um, and then fast forward, I think um, when we picked up our car in 2023, I looked at EV plans and I compared uh, quite a few EV plans actually. And I also compared that through to you know normal solar plans as well. And the best that I could do was I jumped on board with Ovo and I've been with Ovo ever since. Um, shameless plug for Ovo and shameless plug for uh, my referral. If you guys are interested, um, use the referral link down below. But I feel like they genuinely have been fantastic. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a numbers guy and I love money savings because every dollar you save here, um, you can spend it elsewhere, right? So as much as I love saving, I also love spending. So um, yeah, the company has been great. The savings have been great and I genuinely could not find a better deal out there. So, you know, if you are if you have found something, you know, let's discuss it in the comments below and we'll see if we can get anything closer. Um, just a food for thought for everyone and to, for something for you guys to take into consideration. What I get here for my plan does not necessarily mean you can get the same for yours. And the main reason why is because it's dependent by, I think, the energy um, provider or the distributor along with potentially the postcode that you're specifically in. But just know that these deals do exist out there, so hopefully you guys can get a good deal as well. But let's talk about uh, Ovo. So you can see here that between PowerShop and moving to Ovo, so again, 2023 was when we picked up the EV. You can see that the electricity rate went up, the daily supply went down, feeding tariff was down, and remember, um, feeding tariff was down for everyone. So I think 12, it was down to, I think 12 or 10 cents at that point in time for majority of the companies. So I was fairly satisfied with 10 cents. Um, and then the quarterly bills ended up being roughly $150. The bit that I haven't disclosed as a part of this because um, it didn't really matter from our previous year comparison was that I could charge my EV based on this OVO plan. Um, I could charge it for 8 cents between midnight to 6 a.m. And it's the same thing even now, I can charge it between midnight to 6 a.m. for 8 cents. Now, yes, that doesn't factor in or that's not using renewable energy sources, but from a financial side of things, between midnight to 6 a.m., that made sense. So 
Um, that that's essentially one of the deals. And then in late 2023, or maybe it was the start of 2024, Ovo also updated their plans. And between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., when you are generating anything, or when you're using sorry any energy above your excess production, your excess solar production, that is, electricity is essentially free. So that's been really good for me, and that's essentially the plan that I'm still on right now. So again, you can see. It's essentially gone from this bit here, 739 during the winter, uh, sorry, the summer season to through to the winter season, 400 something. We're down to around $150 a quarter at the moment. And that's including the fact that we now have an EV. Um, so yeah, it's been great. And if you have any questions on the plan side of things, let me know and uh, I'll talk about it more. So the next thing I wanna talk about is environmental impact now of course um, there's environmental benefits using solar panels you're generating your own electricity um, I know that Australia we've got so many houses in Australia that do not have solar panels and everyone should jump on board because creating your own electricity is great especially knowing that you're eventually going to get it for free and it's just better for the environment I'll park aside the comments and the discussions and the arguments around the fact that, you know, it costs, um, there, there's a whole side of the discussion around manufacturing and what that costs in terms of emissions to the world and carbon emissions and all of that stuff. But the long story short is there are solar panels that you guys can get. You can generate your own electricity if you can somehow um, afford it or it makes sense logically. Um, it's something that I definitely do recommend. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just doing my part for the environment. I'm not an absolute full green and whatnot, but what I am for is being able to self-generate my electricity, knowing that um, it's going to financially benefit me. So that kind of covers off all the savings now and the environmental impacts. Now let's talk about future projections and the future of, I guess, um, what I want to do. Logically speaking, one battery, two batteries and so forth that always sounds uh, very very likely. There is actually a um, section in here in uh, solar analytics that actually does have a battery calculator. So if I just hit show me the best options and we compare it to say March this month, you can actually see here if I get a three kilowatt hour battery size, battery cost is probably around two and a half to four and a half thousand dollars. Payback time is 12 to 17 years. I'll still be depending on the grid about almost 50% of the time per year. Total yearly savings, $246.24. Jumping down, you know, the most logical one that people talk about, Tesla Powerwall 2, which is about uh, 14 kilowatt hours from the top of my head. So that's somewhere between these two. In terms of the price though, it's probably more around, um, around the upper end on the 12 kilowatt hour one, 18 to 25 years and 20 to 30 years. So I'd say at least uh, 50, at least 18 um, years that you can see here. And again, still need to depend on the grid, but the benefits there is, you know, whole separate discussion around, don't worry about outages, you're supplying your own power. And again, this is only based on the current plan that I'm on. I know that you can go with companies like Amber Electric where you can kind of gamify all of that and you can join um, VPPs to kind of control the battery better and you can really bring down that payback time a lot quicker. So. Maybe that's something on the horizons. I know that Power 2, they're pretty much doing runouts, so to speak, since the Power 3 is eventually going to come. So will I be buying that? Currently don't know. Undecided at the moment. The answer to battery at the moment from my side of things, purely from financial stance, is no, I'm not going to get one. Eventually, I absolutely will though. So uh, yeah, that's that. And un unless there's any other things I should be doing, um, that's pretty much all I've thought about from a battery side of things. I haven't thought about expanding my system or getting a separate system. I do believe from my instance, my roof is fairly fueled up already. You know, I'll put an overlay again of the video. You guys let me know what, what you think, but I feel like from a cost perspective, you know, I'm happy to reap in the benefits now because the system has been paid off. Um, so I think that wraps up everything in terms of this video. Uh, the only next steps really I can recommend is any questions you want, ask it in the comments below. From my own perspective, I found a really helpful website that actually helped me get through a lot of this, is Solar Quotes. You guys may have seen them. Um, essentially, you punch in your postcode or your details, they send it to three suppliers or providers that um, 
they recommend and then those three companies will come back to you with a quote or they'll contact you to talk through whatever it is and to come out to your site to do site inspection if required um, and then to work through all of that. Um, so I did that and I essentially started reading through all the guides. So it was lots of reading at night, but um, it was absolutely well worth it. In terms of cost, so back then, as I said, $9,000, 9.24 kilowatts. Back then, four or five years ago, um, the way that we compared it was the premium side of things and a good buy would be roughly $1,000 per um, kilowatts in terms of your solar system. So I haven't looked at them recently, so I'm not too sure how much the systems cost now, but I would still absolutely recommend a solar system. What you do need to understand is the government rebates or the discounts, so the STCs that I mentioned early on in the video, they are reducing every year. That's just how the program works. So what that means is the rebate that you're going to get every year is going to diminish, and also the solar feeding tariff also diminishes every year. And so the earlier you jump on, the better it is because the earlier you can reap the benefits. It's similar to, to what um, people say about, say, the stock market, you know, time in the market versus timing the market. So the longer you're in there, the better it is. Same thing with solar panels as well. The earlier you're in there, the higher feeding tariff you can get, the better you can make use of renewable energy, the earlier the solar system is gonna pay off. And then, you know, you'll be like in my position where hopefully within a couple of years that your solar system paid off, or at least if you do have a full battery system or you're running off grid, then you don't have to worry about any power outages. So, that's really it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's any questions, as I said, drop it in the comment box below. Otherwise, hope you guys are well and we'll see you soon with more videos. Take care.